Most of you watching this video are probably in the middle of a car lease and you're wondering whether or not you should buy your car at the end of the lease or simply return it back to the dealer. Chances are that in today's economic environment, buying your leased car makes a lot more sense because the price of new and used cars today are much higher than they were just a couple of years ago. Since March of 2020, there has been a semiconductor shortage, and you could argue that no industry was more impacted by this shortage than the automotive industry. Supply chains were severely disrupted and they have yet to recover. And the truth is that many industry experts don't expect the auto industry supply chain to recover for at least a year or more. If you were someone who started leasing a car around 2020 or a little bit before, your lease is probably coming to an end and you're probably wondering whether or not you should buy your leased car. Well, in this video, I'm going to answer that question. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Ravi Wadden and I make videos on YouTube to provide you all with free financial tips and education. If you could do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. But with that, let's jump straight into the video. So the question we're going to answer is, should you buy your leased car? The way I'll structure this video is I'll start off by explaining what a lease buyout is, and then I'll go over five scenarios in which it makes sense to buy your leased car towards the end of your lease term. So what is a lease buyout? A lease buyout is a term that's used in the automotive industry that allows you to buy your leased car as if it were a used car. The only difference between buying your leased car and a used car is that the price for buying your leased car is non-negotiable, which will likely work in your favor. The reason that the price is non-negotiable is because every single automotive lease has something known as the residual value built into the contract. So without getting too technical, the residual value is the price that is set by the leasing company at the beginning of your lease contract to estimate what your leased car will be worth at the end of your leasing term. And you can buy your leased car for the residual value plus any outstanding payments left on your car. These two inputs combined make up the lease buyout. And in this video, I'll be using the term lease buyout quite frequently. So where do you find the residual value of your car? The residual value is going to be in your lease contract. And I know that many of you probably don't know where your lease contract is because you signed your documents two or maybe almost three years ago. And if this is the case, you have two options. Option one, you can call your financing company and get the residual value from the customer service representative. Option two, you can log into your account where you pay your bill and you should be able to find your leasing contract and the residual value within the relevant documentation. All right, so now you know what a lease buyout is and now you know what the residual value is. So let's move on and talk about the five scenarios where it makes sense to buy your leased car. And keep in mind that these are all generalities. Your specific car may or may not make sense to purchase, but I'm hopeful that by the end of this video, you'll have a much better idea of whether or not you should purchase your leased car. The first scenario where it makes sense to buy your leased car is if you're way over or under your allowed mileage. Most lease contracts are for three years and 36,000 miles. So if you've driven your car way over 36,000 miles, it probably makes sense to buy it. And on the contrary, if you've driven way less than 36,000 miles, it also probably makes sense to buy it. The reason it makes sense to buy your car if you're way over the mileage is because the dealer is gonna charge you a hefty fee for each one of those excess miles over 36,000. And the cost of these miles really depends on your lease contract, so please refer to your lease contract to find out what the cost of these miles is, and then you can make an educated decision as to whether or not you should buy your leased car. And on the contrary, if you've only driven your car 10,000 miles over three years, but you paid for a 36,000 mile lease, it probably makes sense to buy the car because chances are that you have equity in your lease. If you were to simply return a car that's only been driven 10,000 miles back to the dealership, you're leaving money, potentially thousands of dollars on the table because chances are that your car is probably worth more than the buyout price. The second scenario where it makes sense to buy your lease car is if your lease car has excess wear and tear. If you're towards the end of your lease term and your car has scratches, door dings, curved rims, a dent in the bumper, stains on the seats, missing floor mats, and a cracked windshield, it probably makes sense to buy the car instead of turning it in at the end of the lease term. The reason is that the dealership will charge you severe penalties for excess wear and tear. But if you buy the car at the end of the lease term, you don't have to pay these wear and tear penalties, but you should still probably get it fixed. Paying someone out of pocket to do these repairs is likely much cheaper than paying the dealership's excess wear and tear penalties. And again, these are just generalities and it really depends on what the dealer will charge you in excess wear and tear penalties versus what you can get the car repaired for on your own. 
But in general, if your leased car is completely annihilated, it probably makes sense to buy it. The third scenario in which it makes sense to buy your leased car is if your car is worth more than the buyout price. As I mentioned earlier in this video, used car prices are at historical highs, and that's amazing news if you are in the middle of a lease because your car is probably worth more than the buyout price. As an example, let's say the buyout price on your current lease is $30,000. Chances are that in today's auto market, your car is worth much more than $30,000. And if you've determined that your car is worth more than the buyout price, you should definitely buy the car. And if you end up buying your lease car, you have a couple of options. Number one, you can turn around and sell the car for a profit. Or two, you can do what my wife and I did and drive the car for an additional year and sell it later down the road and still make a profit or potentially break even. In general, most people who lease their car before the summer of 2020 will have equity in their lease right now. And it probably makes sense to buy the car instead of returning it back to the dealer. The fourth scenario where it makes sense to buy a lease car is if a dealer wants to buy it or if a private party wants to buy it. Many of you may not know this, but you can sell your car during your lease to a dealership or to a private party. And in most cases, you can only sell your lease car back to the dealer if the dealer is the same manufacturer as your car. For instance, if you're leasing a Honda, you can only sell your car back to a Honda dealership. It doesn't have to be the same Honda dealership that you bought your car at. It can be any Honda dealership in the nation. Another option is to use a service like Swap -a Lease or Lease Trader. Both of these websites let you transfer your lease to other private parties that may be interested in taking over your lease. The process is a bit more complicated than simply selling your car to the dealer, but it is an option that you can consider. The benefits of selling your car back to the dealer before the lease ends or transferring your car to a private party before the lease ends is that you won't have to pay sales tax. For instance, if I chose to buy my leased car for its buyout price of $30,000 at the end of my lease and then turn around and sell it, I would have to pay sales tax on that $30,000 purchase price. But if I sold my car to a dealer right before my lease ends, I could potentially sell the car to the dealer for more than $30,000 and make a profit and avoid the sales tax of having to buy the car and then sell it for a profit. Similarly, you can post your lease on a site like Swap -a Lease and charge an upfront fee that you can pocket and have someone take over your lease all while avoiding sales tax. The fifth scenario where it makes sense to buy your lease car is if you like the car and you don't want the hassle of car shopping. Like I said earlier, most people that are in car leases right now have equity in their lease. And in most cases, it probably makes sense to just buy your current lease car rather than shopping for a new one. New and used car prices are so high right now that the chances of you getting another lease deal like the one you already have are slim to none. And if you like your current car, why not just keep it and wait for new and used car prices to come down, especially if your car is still under factory warranty. Most lease terms are three years and 36,000 miles, but many cars bumper to bumper warranty is four years and 50,000 miles. So if your car is still under its bumper to bumper warranty, it's a consideration that you should make when determining whether or not you should buy the car. But the truth is that leasing and buying a new car is a headache. You have to renegotiate, you have to go to a bunch of dealerships, send a bunch of emails, and a lot of us just don't want to deal with that right now, especially with the car market the way it is. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions at all or if you need help with your particular leasing situation, please let me know in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you. I hope you all got value from this video and if you did, please remember to give this video a big thumbs up and please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all next time.